you were eligible to apply for judicial review. Why didn't you? I singularly, I didn't want to um, go back into the media arena and be subjected to what I was subjected to in the past. But more than that, I didn't want to subject my victim's family to it mm -hmm. and had felt that it was wrong to re-victimize them. I knew what I did. I know what I've done. And at the same time, I am accountable for the offense that I committed, and I've committed myself to serving out the length of time that um, Corrections Canada and the Pro Board feel necessary, so until they're prepared to work with me. And a big part of it, I had felt that uh, I was cheating. Uh, I felt as though I was cheating the victim's family on the time being served. And I just thought, well, frankly, I'm feeling pretty comfortable about serving time quite easy to do and I, I didn't want to go back and put my family through this, didn't want to put my mm -hmm. nephew's family through it. So I just said, well, I'll serve the time. And so you're ready to, you feel you're ready to start moving on now? Yeah. Moving on from what? From, from here and start working back into the community? Yes, yes, gradually. I, I have no illusions about moving out there very quickly mm -hmm. and um, getting back into the swing of things after being involved in prison so long. So. I see that taking place. But at the same time, I also feel um, hesitancy and resistance to going out because, I, well, I recognize so much has changed since I've been out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have to go through a lot of adaptation to uh, employment issues, housing issues, uh, relationship issues, and then just trying to establish those again. Mm -hmm. And though I feel up to it, at the same time I'm going, okay, maybe just take one little step here at a time. So, so you recognize that you're going to need a lot of support, and yes, and it's going to be a long, slow, gradual release. Yes, yes. Okay. Anything, anything else that's going on that uh, well, you want one, to talk about? Yeah, one thing that has come up out of this, and as I said earlier, we're looking at trying to establish um, specific. Uh, case-specific community linkages for relapse prevention plan. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to a couple staff here, uh, one of which is uh, Clendon, and then we're looking at um, trying to tie in with the local community mm -hmm. for what's here, but we're finding out that there's not a lot of relapse prevention resources available here. Mm -hmm. And yesterday it was suggested to me the possibility of transferring over to Pittsburgh Institution to take their relapse prevention, and then from that minimum security transfer back up to Beaver Creek. But at the same time, I have to work out the details because I've got my family that's involved and my friends in the support group, and is it fair to them to be traveling so far away? Mm -hmm. And then my other... Um, but how long would you be, how, realistically, how long would you be looking at going to Pittsburgh for and, and then transferring up? Well, ideally, I'd like to go for the program and have it timed with uh, an opportunity for when the program begins. Mm-hmm when a bed is available to actually go there. But at the same time, I don't know how long it would take Pittsburgh Institution themselves mm -hmm. to not only accept that concept that I would be transferring out again, but whether or not they'd be willing to do that. So it's a chance that hasn't uh, really been worked out yet. Well, one of the things we can do is we can uh, have the, uh, John does Pittsburgh. And he, uh, John Reeves. Oh, yes, yes. And he can talk to the programming people there and maybe um, get some direction from them whether or not that's a realistic plan. Okay. Because in some respects I feel better about going to Pittsburgh to take the program because it's one that I recognize plus the SC and the Pro Board um, feels most comfortable dealing with. How do you feel about it? Okay. Again, it's a matter of it, it's another move. It's another move, so I have to adjust to that. And, um, but do you think that you need that program? That's what I'm asking. It's suitable to help uh, shore up my relapse prevention plan, yeah. Yeah, it would be. And at the same time, though, if there is um, growing resources in this area, mm -hmm. then can I stay here? That's the question I'd pose. Can I stay here to work it out, mm -hmm. uh, to work on my relapse prevention plan here, stay close to the family home environment, as well as the local community where mm -hmm. I'm garnering support now? Um, so why, why would I have to take the absence from here in order to do that if we can develop something here? Yeah. But if it's not available, right. and it's something that you recognize you need, yes. maybe that is the best plan, is to go over there, do the program, because mm -hmm. you're still a number of years that. away. Yes. Um, right. Well, I have talked it over with my pro officer, and she's actually in the process of uh, 
evaluating what would be best in my case. So she's mm -hmm. gone back to her uh, chief of case management for his evaluation and then likely have some other meeting take place with mm -hmm. other staff members to evaluate what's best. Essentially, I'm just turning my hands over to them and saying, okay, pilot the case and I'll mm -hmm. follow suit with whatever's required. But you, you're a main player in this, so you've got to make some decisions too. You know, um, mm -hmm. like I say, you come in at a really early age mm -hmm. and, you know, it's your life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's your it's your plan. Um, you've got to identify what your needs are. Right. You know, don't always rely on other people to, to do that for you. Yes. So, um, it might be an idea to further explore going over to Pittsburgh if that's where the program's available. Right. Instead of going over here where it's not available at this time, mm -hmm. that might be an option that you, that you may want to, you may want to pursue. Okay. But think about it. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be a while. You still got your other uh, psychological tests to do. You got to do some follow-up with that. Right. Something else that was just done that I probably need to go over is the custody rating scale. And I was just given this yesterday, and it has to do with uh, this a scale that is established upon intake mm -hmm. to find out uh, my institutional adjustment, where I should first be housed, and and also potential for reintegration and escape us. And then I was given the custody rating scale guideline by the parole officer as well. So. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I noticed was uh, street stability yeah. and the rating and score that they have. And then I came here, I was looking at what was actually referenced. And interpersonal relationships and how they're actually tabulated or entered in. Yeah. Okay. And for myself, I felt that I was actually doing better than what they had listed here, so mm -hmm. I have to take it back to the parole officer and see if some adjustment can be made. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Anything else? No, that's pretty much it. It's the rest of it's a matter of lining up what we have for um, the Lakers group and uh, projects that are upcoming and what we can do, and uh, essentially inviting some guests in to okay. develop some more community-based projects. Alrighty. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, David.